Major Bob Kating Rulengnau, a Tangkul Naga, was born in Ukrul district of Manipur on the 28th February 1912 to Hamring Rulang and my Sangvul. fortunate to have him as a father. He has taught us many things. One of them is that I remember him as a very upright, honest, very diligent, sensitive person and uh, humane, very humane. He always looked at the human side of any problem. He always tried to help people in his capacity he was in different, different capacities in the administration, but he was very good in that thing. So he had principles, and he taught us those principles under which we should live. He was a very God-fearing person. He believed in the might and the right of God, especially in Jesus. So he always taught us that we must always pray. Do not forget that you have a more powerful person up there. Don't, when you're in trouble, look up to him, ask him for his help, ask him for his guidance. So he was that way very, very straightforward. In 1932, he founded the Tankul Student Union, which expanded in later years to become the Tangkul Katamnao Saklong. Major Bob Kuting graduated from Cotton College, Gowati, in 1937 and was a teacher at Harisingha Mission English School in the Bodo Tribal Belt of Mangaldai in Assam. The following year, he became the headmaster of the same school. Major Bob Kuting was persuaded by the SDO of Ukrul to join the army in the King's Commission. After clearing the interviews and was selected to the King's Commission as an officer, he was commissioned to the 19th Hyderabad Regiment in 1941 and posted to the Regimental Centre at Agra. The most important issue is the organization of the tribals of the Northeast to fight for a then unknown country called India. That, that seems to be the most important issue. Uh, of, uh, of the air of the time that time subsequently on uh, on independence Bob Kating rejoined the Indian Army and was posted for a while with the Assam regiment that is where I believe he met his wife after World War II he was assigned to the third battalion Assam regiment as a co-commander based at Shillong in 1945 he married Clarice Nora Lindo, a resident of Shillong. The couple was placid with two sons and two daughters. He was a real family man. He loved the family. He would do a lot of things for a family. Even though we may not have deserved many things, but he used to overlook many of our lapses and try to correct us whenever he could. Advise us what is to do which time to go, how to go about certain things. From an early age, Bob Kating had the spirit of courage and adventure. He was a nature lover and an environmentalist. Angling by bait and fly casting was one of his favorite leisure pastime. My father used to love fishing, angling, you know. So right from young age, he had taken us out for fishing. I used to go most of the time, it was me who used to accompany my father. So he had put all the bait, put the line, fixed the line, everything. Then he said, now throw, you see. He was also fond of composing music and writing poems. He is, in fact, credited with composing and writing the lyrical anthem of his tribe, the Tankul Naga tribe. Yeah, he used to write. He was, he was one of the uh, first lyricists of uh, among the Tankuls, because some of his uh, 
poetry was sung a song, so he was regarded as one of the earliest uh, lyricists. Bob Cutting has been a legend as far as Northeast India is concerned. One is the fact that Bob Cutting was able to organize the tribals of uh, the Tangkul region and also the areas of Nagaland, Manipur, to form what was known as the Victor Force, or the V Force, which fought in World War II inside the jungles of uh, Ukrul as well as further took the battle into Burma, where, uh, where he was able to harass the advancing Japanese troops and was able to give back information uh, to the British which proved to be crucial in the battles of both Imphal and Kohima. Not long after, Major Bob Kutting was ordered to Chorhat, from where he was inducted into the Victor Force, commonly known as the V Force. He was made an area commander to operate in the border areas of Manipur and inside Burma as well. His commitment and dedication to his job, as also his exploits during the war, was appreciated and acknowledged by his superiors. In many ways, uh, though Bob Cutting's role has been recognized by the British in the awards that he was given as the member of the British Empire, as well as uh, a number of citations for commendation. For exemplary service and valor, Major Bob Cutting received a Commander-in-Chief Gallantry Certificate, mentioned in dispatches on two occasions, awarded the Military Cross and honor with the Order of Member of the British Empire. Uh, from what uh, records have told us is that uh, at that time the integration of Tawang had not been made with the Union of India. And because of that, uh, Tamang was largely undemarketed area and Bob on his own initiative went across to Tamang and in the early years of 1950-51 raised the flag of the Union of India for the first time in Tamang. Thereby bringing Tamang under the fold of the Indian Union. Uh, Bob has remained a legend for us in the Assam Rifles it is the history of people like Bob Cutting on whom the stock of Assam rifles having gone into every part of the Northeast is actually built upon. Our entire focus, our entire Dhai Murti that we talk about comes from the fact that we help the people of Myanmar, Burma today, Myanmar now, Burma then, and the refugees who came back with the Assam rifle Javans who were fighting the Japanese during their advance during World War II. In January 1951, he, along with 200 soldiers of the 5th Battalion Assam Rifles, set out on a mission. With this force, he set out on the track to Tawang. On reaching his destination in early February, he planted the Indian tricolor in Tawang soil for the very first time. Doctor the people there, the way that he interacted with them, the way that he spoke to them, treated them, they saw that this is a different type of person. He's not a person who's coming as a conqueror. You know? They saw that he was a human being. He treated them that way. That was to bring about the unity. 
and he brought about that unity. So on their own, after a certain period, they came on their own and accepted the Indian administration. They said, Sahib, we've seen you working. You're not asking for anything. You're not asking for taxes. You're not asking for this. You're not asking for so many things, no, which the then Tibetan government was uh, charging and taking. He said, I didn't come for that. Because I came here to tell you that this place belongs to India. You are part of India. You have never accepted India before because you didn't know about it. I'm bringing it to your notice, your knowledge, that this is part of India. So you know, I want you to join me, help me to do something for this region, to work for you. Later, Bob was posted, uh, Bob joined uh, the the Northeast Frontier Agency Administrative Service and was posted as an assistant police officer to Bondila. NEFA was the Northeast Frontier Agency. It is the, it demarcates an area of the Seven Sisters. And at that time, NEFA was under the Ministry of External Affairs. And Bob was on one of the pioneer civil administrators who were chosen under the Northeast Frontier Political Service, which later was was handed over to the Indian Administrative Service of this region. In 1961, he was selected as the first civilian officer to undergo the one-year National Defense College course. On completion of the course, in 1962, he was posted to Sikkim as Development Commissioner. But his tenure was short-lived when the Indo-China War took place that year. He immediately sought transfer to Nefa, where his experience would be better utilized. He made his name uh, more as an administrator also, because when he founded Bomdila, then when he took over Tawang, uh, in fact, uh, his taking over Tawang is regarded as one of the major initiatives uh, done by India uh, on the Nordic frontier and I personally feel that he was awarded the Padma Shri in 1957 only because of that initiative. For the 1957 Republic Day Honours, Major Rolang Nao Kuthing was awarded the Padma Shri Award for the rescue and rehabilitation work during the 1950 earthquake and his Tawang role. Major Bob Kuthing is today acknowledged as the first tribal to become the King's Commission, Indian officer, and also the first tribal from Northeast India to be appointed as an ambassador of India. Major Bob Kathing remains a hero and a legend, not only for people of a cruel district, but for the entire Northeast. If I may say, he is a beacon of inspiration for the youth of the area. And Sam Rifles has been keeping alive this legend of Bob Kathing by regularly organizing and conducting sports events and the memorial service in his honor to coincide with his birth anniversary in February. In 1953, Major Bob Kuthing was confirmed in the Indian Frontier Administrative Service and the following year, he was posted as a political officer in Twensang, Nagaland. In 1957, he was transferred and posted as the first deputy commissioner of the Mokokchung district, Nagaland. He, he was very jovial. In his way, he was very jovial. People really loved him. He used to mix with different people. He, in various parties, gatherings with the public, you know, into those days the villages had very innocent people. So he used to join them in all the groups and all those, singing songs and dancing with them. He enjoyed. Throughout his lifetime, never did he overlook the poorest of the poor, nor did he ignore the highest of the high people. For Bob Kuthing, Everyone was treated equally, irrespective of their status. He was always considered a meticulous planner, an able and judicious administrator, and a very far-sighted man 
by his superiors and colleagues alike. The year 1947 was another watershed period in the glorious life of Bab Kuting. He resigned from the army and joined the interim government of Manipur as minister in charge of Hill's administration. And finally, as the ambassador of India to Burma from 1972 to 1975. After his retirement from a long fruitful public life, Major Bob Cutting continued his connection with the state of Manipur and the people when he served in an honorary capacity as the chairman of the Tribal Law Commission, Manipur. He was one of the advisors to the governor of Manipur during the presidential rule. His spirit of adventure and nationalism carried him through his life. A hearty and healthy person, Bob Kuthing was admired by his friends and foes. He lived the life of a true warrior. A cruel district per se, and the role and contribution of Assam Rifles uh, because it is here where the legend of Bob Kathing was really born. Headquarter 10th Sector Assam Rifles came to Somsai in 1988. The sector is today responsible for Ukrul and Kamjong districts. Over the last three decades, Assam Rifles has been intricately involved in number of operational activities as well as development initiatives and these include in the field of healthcare, education, community development, youth engagement, just to name a few. Its role and contribution towards assimilation of the people of the Northeast into the national mainstream is truly monumental and today it's fondly known as the Sentinels of the Northeast, Friends of the Hill People. At present, the force, it's a potent organization with 46 battalions. It has been designated as the border guarding force for the Indo-Myanmar border. There was one quote which he had written when I was in school, senior, senior classes, in my autograph. You know, those days we used to have autograph books and all this, no? So, this particular thing was, it's very, very good, which I think so many people should also try to follow. He just wrote simply, be a man. That's all. And saint. Love, daddy, and saint. Be a man. Nothing else. Bob Cutting breathed his last on 12th January 1990 at his beloved Valley View Cottage at Mantripukri in the outskirts of Imphal, Manipur. The nation will always be indebted to the service and sacrifices of this unsung hero, a true son of the soil. <laughs>